But right now, my wife is in the hospital. And when you're pulling in $71 a week from unemployment and about $27 a week from food stamps, it doesn't go far. Do the American Technician, 1972. You have a sometime our scientists, living our engineers, our skilled, the foundation of our technology, the product of our great schools, of our tradition to build, to create, to improve. I couldn't get a job at my present type of educational level. I couldn't get a job at a lower level. I couldn't get unemployment, and I couldn't get welfare. So the only thing left, I had to get money from my brother. It seems unbelievable to me that when you look at the need for construction, the need for engineering, that a man with a master's degree in engineering can't get a job. There's something wrong with our leadership when a situation like that exists. In my case, I happen to be past retirement age. Uh, here I am uh, without a pension. Not only, I'm not speaking just of the uh, poverty level, you might say, that this reduces a man to, but there's also a question of wasted resource. After all, a man on his 65th birthday doesn't automatically lose all his marbles all at one time. Winston <laughs> Churchill became prime minister when he was 65. I can't compete with Mr. Churchill. <laughs> <laughs> but still, I've got something left that can be utilized. You'd, you'd like to feel useful and make uh, some contributions. Would. You're not really old. To be past 65 is not to be old. Uh, I myself have. I'm out of work at this time. Every job I go after, 50 applicants. He should be lucky he's not in controls engineering. He only has 50 competitors for each job. We have more like 600 on each job. That's in the first three days. I was making $71 a week. I went to work for two days. I was completely canceled out for that week's benefits. You're actually penalized because of your education. Okay. A man who has run out of his unemployment benefits he can't get welfare because he still owns his house. He's a capitalist, so he is out of our system of benefits. He's got to be destroyed financially and morally before he can get the benefits, and then once he's been destroyed, what's his incentive to get back up again? It's a long road up from the bottom. We know we need engineers, we need teachers, we need scientists. We're not gonna let you die on the vine. I think a lot of people aren't realizing the importance of engineering. American goods have always been more expensive. But the difference in the goods today is American technology isn't any better than any other country. We should have the Wonka engine. I mean, our technology is stagnant. We've been concentrating our research and development on building the best tank and the best missile, while the Japanese and the Germans have been concentrating their research and development funds on building the best compact car, building television and radio, consumer goods, and we've starved that whole sector of our economy. That's, that's and we're going to lose out in the end. Not only us, because if the engineers are hurt, everybody's going to get hurt eventually. None of the industry is going to be competitive with anywhere around the world. And they're just going to come in, and all their products are going to move right into this country. Supposing we've made some investments to help industry modernize its plant, we could compete with the Germans or the Japanese or any other country in the sure, world. Okay, we're number one. Who gets the money from where it is to the people who are going to do that work for something that's going to benefit all of us. We come right back to the fundamental problem of where we're going to invest our resources. Are we going to rebuild the cities of America, or are we going to destroy the cities in Southeast Asia? You can't do both. With the right kind of leadership, this country can have full employment, utilizing people's skills up to the fullest of their ability, and we can do it in peacetime. I don't think we have to have a war going in order to provide employment for the people of this country. McGovern, for the people. The people are paying for this campaign with their hard-earned dollars. Send what you can to McGovern for President, Washington, D.C.